Hello everyone, welcome back. I want to show you guys the new garrison gun, man. Now, I've had this gun now since December. So, the gun isn't exactly new. Uh, what's new about it is that I finally mounted the uh, the scope that I intended to put on this. The primary arms 5 to 25 by 56 scope. Um, so, what I did is I bought, bo I bought both of these things about the same time back in December. But I have been testing them out, uh, testing them out independently. My mouth is freezing because it's freaking 20 degrees here. Um, I've been testing them out independently. So I've been testing out the scope underneath a regular Palmetto uh, uh, AR-15 that I'm very familiar with. And I was testing out the AR-10 uh, with a, uh, a 510C uh, red dot from Holosun. Uh, with a magnifier behind it because I'm really uh, familiar with it. Okay, so after um, hold on, let's get this thing on. Uh, so after I guess two and a half months, I, I, I basically I'm I was ready to put these two together. So I've had them now together for a couple of days, uh, and I'm loving it. Now one of the things I did I did put this Hollow Sun uh, re pistol dot here. I put it on. I put it on my non-dominant eye. Now, I'm pretty omni-dominant, but I generally shoot right hand or right eye dominant, even though I'm omni-dominant. Uh, the idea here is that left eye looks through the pistol optic, and then right eye can see through the scope. Uh, the main reason why I put this on here was not so much for, like, CQB type of stuff, but because, like, let's say I can be all the way up in 25 power. I can see something out there. I can get my pistol optic on it and then even if I'm on 25 power the crosshairs are like when I switch eyes my crosshairs are on the target so I don't have to like zoom up and zoom down I can stay in uh, one magnification you know in, in whatever magnification I want to be in so I, I've done, I did a lot of testing I tried doing a piggyback uh, the turrets on this thing are just too big I had to lift my head way way high uh, this turned out to be the best thing so I have done Lots of videos on this AR-10. This is the PA-10 Gen 3, uh, and the um, and this scope, this uh, primary round five to twenty-five by fifty-six. Uh, and I'm going to put a link below in the comments and the description uh, to the to the playlist uh, for this uh, AR-15 and the scope. Because I've done a ton of videos, but now I've had this now uh, together for I don't know I think uh, almost a week. I've been testing these things. To, to, Together, I, I finally got my my zero perfect. Um, I had this at 200 yards with the chevron right under here. Right, it was at 200 yards, um, and I basically I got it's not my best group. I mean, basically this gun gets about about an inch and a quarter MOA. Uh, you know, one one and a quarter inch at 100 yards on average. Okay. Um, so now at 200 yards, I got basically a four-inch group, five four inches at 200 yards with with uh, five shots. So that's two M away. <laughs> Look at this three-shot cluster here, man. I got three shots at 200 yards at one inch, and that's very typical. I think that has to do more with the ammunition. I mean, just ammunition consistency. Um, I've had this gun out to 500 yards with the red dot and the magnifier, and and it did great. Um, so this is an excellent gun. Now, I call this a garrison gun because this thing is heavy. I mean, the gun with nothing on it weighs like nine pounds. Um, with this scope on it right now, it weighs like 12 pounds, three ounces, okay? And then with these uh, the magazines, and this is just the, the 20 rounders, uh, they weigh, they weigh uh, a, a pound and a half. So that brings the weight of the gun with the scope and the magazine up to about like 13 and a half pounds okay so with 13 and a half pounds you're not going to be doing a whole lot of running with this gun okay and it's not a question of work out and get stronger i mean i work out plenty okay i posted videos working out uh it's that somebody with a lighter gun is just going to be nim more nimble and faster okay uh, and they're going to beat you so this is a gun that you want to be like in this setup 13 and a half pounds this is great uh, for a garrison gun where like you're in a position you're covering a road or you're covering you know you know a, a large area and i see this as an anti-material gun okay 
I feel that AR-15s are excellent out to 500 yards, even 600 yards, okay, uh, for 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 soft, fleshy targets, okay? Now, you might say that at 600 yards, it's only going to wound. Well, at 600 yards, you only need to wound, okay? Because if somebody's wounded at 600 yards, they're not going to keep charging on your position. If somebody's wounded at, like, 100 yards or 50 yards, they're, they're, they might conclude that their best chance of survival is to continue to attack forward and defeat you. But at 500 and 600 yards, even at 300 yards, if they're wounded, even if they got like little 22 holes in them, they're going to they're gonna get out of there, right? They're not going to continue to attack forward. So for soft, fleshy things, I have said this many times, uh, AR-15s are, are plenty good out to, um, out to like 600 yards, okay? This is anti-material. This is for the... Uh, Mad Max Road Warrior Apocalypse, okay? Uh, this is to stop vehicles that are trying to, you know, charge your position, suicide, you know, suicide trucks, that kind of thing. I've done videos on how to uh, deal with that. Um, so this is an excellent gun um, if you're going to be, like, in a stationary position. So Palmetto AR-10, this is the 20-inch barrel, right? Um, and as far as the gas setting on this, I have it in, the, in, in gas position number two. So you go clockwise. To all the way down to close it and then just come back two positions with with the uh, hot ammunition like the speed of munitions this thing goes at about 2800 feet per second oh, these are 100 you know 150 grain bolts you go for you know uh, 2800 feet per second you get something like 2600 foot pounds of energy uh gas position number two okay um if you're shooting stuff that's a little bit slower gas position number three when i'm shooting tula I go to gas position number four or number five, okay? Uh, so this stuff, this this is a great gun. Okay, now the sling I, I've ended up putting on here is the uh, CB Life one. I, I, I really, I, you, normally I use the brash ones, which are a little bit faster on the, on, the, on the release and take up. But because this is a heavier gun, I went with the CB Life one because the, the sling is an inch and a quarter, so it distributes the weight a, a little bit better, okay? Um, I put, I did uh, put in a Palmetto two-stage trigger. I think that's a Schmidt trigger. Uh, that works good. And I did put in a Core Valley 5.6 ounce buffer weight and a sprinkle orange spring. Okay. The main purpose of that was to just like soften up the recoil a little bit. Um, I mean, uh, I did not want to put a muzzle brake on this. I mean, I find muzzle brakes just annoying and loud. Okay. So I did not put a muzzle brake on this. Uh, Fire some shots with this bad boy. Starting to get a little dark now, so you guys might see a little bit of flash. That's why I kind of I timed this video as the uh, as the sun was going down. Okay. So like I said, as far as accuracy, if you do your job, you'll easily get an inch and a quarter. Uh, you know, if the wind's not messing with you, if your ammunition's not messing with you, inch and a quarter. I've been inside of an inch plenty of times. Very accurate gun. So we're gonna fire some shots here. Uh, it's uh, just dark enough that uh, you can see me, and yet you should be able to see uh, some muzzle flash. So, in that gas position number two, uh, it's... Uh, it's it, it's it's you know it's 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 nice okay now did it move around as i was shooting yeah i could see that red dot bouncing around a little bit if you're going to do some rapid fire uh that's why i say that there's really no substitute for an ar-15 i mean your ar-15 with your 556 five, is going to be like your primary gun okay um this is your anti-material gun okay so even on garrison duties like you're going to have the AR-15 as your main gun, and if you see like a truck or a vehicle come at, coming at you that requires 308, then you pick up the 308. Um, you don't want to be wasting the 308, in my opinion, on soft, fleshy things if 5.56 five, is good enough, okay? Because you can have, you can stockpile like 5.56, five, you know, in the tens of thousands of rounds, okay? 308, I mean, you might have a few thousand rounds of this, okay? Um, so, so yeah, I mean, that's for me, AR-10, 308, anti-material. Now you might say, Hey, I mean, uh, wouldn't a 50 cal be better? Yeah, but 
who has a 50 cal and even those people that have 50 cals how many rounds of ammunition do they have for 50 cal all the people that i spoke to that have 50 caliber barrets they, they most of them have less than 100 rounds okay so that's why the ar-10 uh, is very practical as anti-material so uh, drop some comments below and do check out the playlists um if you're not a member of the channel subscribe and i'll talk to you all soon